Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 2, Ecosystem. We're coming from the past episode where we talked about variables and numbers, and with the upcoming code I realized that it does no longer make sense to just uh, directly use the Rust-C compiler to compile the examples and run them. It makes uh, more sense to introduce you into the ecosystem and tooling of Rust that will help you a lot uh, writing your code and also managing your dependencies, documentation, testing and whatnot. So comparison between those two ecosystems is given here in my uh, overview table. It's by random order, so a linter is not the most uh, important thing. However, for Python, we would have the PyLint PEP8 uh, linters that will tell you if you are um, not writing code that is idiomatic or doing formatting that is an accepted uh, standard. Cargo Clippy will not necessarily uh, talk to you about uh, formatting, but it is very, very helpful with giving hints of how to improve the performance, giving you ideas of how to use more idiomatic code that will be easier to read by other existing Rust programmers already. Then LSP is the language server protocol. That's a system that was initially uh, installed in uh, Microsoft uh, Visual Studio Code, but is now available in all kinds of editors to help you with giving um, definitions of your functions, uh, auto-completion, and uh, pointing out errors in your code, so stuff that might not compile because you forgot a semicolon, for example. And uh, Python has the Python language server that will help you with that. In Rust, it is a RLS that comes by, uh, by default, the Rust language server. However, the more efficient and a bit better implemented uh, system would be Rust Analyzer. This one you have to install yourself. But, side note, in, as of September 2020, it was agreed that um, the way that Rust Analyzer works will be integrated into the Rust language server, meaning that uh, you should actually start using Rust Analyzer right away because that is the future of how this will work anyways. For code formatting, there is uh, YAPF, uh, yet another Python formatter from Google, or a simple uh, incarnation is AutoPep8. This exists as well, just a standard tool coming with the Rust uh, cargo tool is cargo FMT or cargo format. It auto formats your code, the default settings I was very happy with actually right off the bat, so no configuration needed, amazing. Building binaries, well, cargo build, Rust, that's the job of Rust, building binaries. For Python, it's a bit uh, more of an effort. You have to learn like setup tools, PyDoXe or some other tools that will build it for your environment. Testing, by default, Python has a Python unit test. Third-party testing tools that are a bit more developed um, is PyTest, for example. Cargo brings you Cargo Test with, uh, for Rust, and that helps uh, you very much as well <coughs> to build your unit tests or integration tests. Build environment. Um, it's not really the same, the left and right here, but uh, normally in Python you would set up your virtual environment, manage the dependencies with pip, and store the dependencies in requirements.txt. Um, cargo new would kind of create a new project, so it's not a virtual environment kind of type. Um, with cargo update, for example, you can update your dependencies that are stored in the cargo toml file. But this is not a direct um, comparison, a valid one, because Cargo Tomo also has um, your project description um, and lots of other meta information that will, you will need maybe for building tests and stuff in there. So this is um, a much more sophisticated system. Then documentation building. You either learn how Stinks documentation work or Doxygen or many other tools for Python and uh, agree on that and use that. Cargo brings you by default also a doc generation tool called Cargo Doc. And, and um, this documentation works actually fairly well. And it includes even doc testing and many other amazing things. And this also comes right off the box, really cool. Um, for benchmarking, Python provides you, for example, C profile to run your micro benchmarks. Cargo Bench is a fairly raw. Uh, tool. It's not a rough tool. It's not very um, sophisticated, but Criterion.rs is. So that's a third-party tool you would have to install extra. But with this, you can do your micro benchmarks 
yourself and that's fairly useful and powerful. Okay, let's jump into the shell. And um, here we can talk about already the, about the tooling. Normally Rust uh, suggests you to use the Rust up tool to install and manage your, inst your tools. And that is actually a good idea and very useful. So with Rust up, you can uh, show the stuff you have installed. Here you can see I have uh, two different tool chains, the default uh, stable compiler toolchain and uh, the nightly. So that would have the all newest features that you might want to play with or one of your uh, dependencies needs. Um, then I also installed two targets. So the one on the bottom would be for my operating system. But the one on the top is for WebAssembly. So I can build uh, binaries that would then be, for example, loaded into a browser or into something that can execute uh, WebAssembly binaries. And at the bottom here, you will just see the currently active toolchain, and that would be for my operating system and the, the stable compiler of Rust-C. To install something extra that you want to use that comes, however, with the standard uh, ecosystem, you can, for example, use Rust up uh, component add uh, Clippy to install the helpful uh, linter. And uh, in my case, it will tell me, well, it's already installed, so I have no more things to do there. Then for your environment, you might want to download the Rust Analyzer and a useful plugin for your editor to use the Rust Analyzer right away. And what you can see here in my prompt on the left here is like the current time, for example, and you will see there's more fancy stuff coming up. Um, that is a Starship. That's a fairly cool uh, system. Let's go back into the browser um, to show you. So it has a fancy website that gives you the infos to what it does. Um, here you can see um, a quick intro. They have made a small video to show you what it can do. And install is fairly easy. You just run their install script or you use one of your package managers. Then you add it to your respective shells um, prompt output and off you go. So back to the shell. Here we can create a new project using Cargo. New lib, my lib, to create a new library, not a binary. And this will create the new package directory for us. We switch over to uh, this folder. You will now already see the magic that comes from Starship. So you can see here, it tells me we are on branch master. No changes. Uh, package version of my package is 0 0.1 and it's compiled by the Rust C compiler of uh, this version. This helps you greatly with development, immediately knowing where you are. So I prefer to have a prompt like that. It also provides you with um, the standard TOML file already needed, cargo TOML file already needed, and with a minimal implementation of um, a source file. So you would have your source lib file that only contains a test that does a very simple test for you. To show off the features of all those Rust toolings, I prepared a small library for you. It's uh, called the Geo. So let's switch in there. Inside Geo, I prepared uh, the source code already with documentation. Let's jump in. And uh, let's go to line number one. And here we can see that I already documented as much as I can use. Full documentation starts with uh, two slashes and a bang. This documents your package overall, not just a certain block of your code. It uses markdown notation. So this um, hash is for our headline. And here we have bullet points, for example. Then below, we are writing documentation for this uh, trait that is part of the code. It uses uh, three slashes. Then we have our source code. And this continues all the way down. Here is also pretty cool. You can document the properties of your struct as well. So this line here documents the X coordinate and so on. This uh, keeps going inside the source code for us. And uh, here we have a special form of documentation. <clears throat> you can see that I have written documentation of what uh, area or the implementation of the trait area for the square does this function. But I've also written code 
that demonstrates how to use this. And uh, the cool part here is this code is also run when you run cargo tests, meaning that if you change your software and uh, this code is no longer compatible, it will actually no longer successfully run your tests. You will know this and you can update your documentation. So having outdated documentation, code, example code, is no longer basically possible because this will greatly help you to avoid that. And on the far bottom, you can already see that there's like an underlined uh, line here. This is a test that is a normal test. Let's jump uh, to this one that is denoted uh, by this configuration and the test functions are also denoted. And this uh, will then be run for you when you execute cargo test. This is a very small test. It basically makes an instantiation of the circle and uh, then runs the computation for area. And since we can pre-compute this, we can also reduce the number. This is highlighted for us. So let's see why this is the case. When we go to the line, you will see that um, Clippy is warning us that this is a comparison between two floats and this can backfire. So you maybe want to write uh, a better comparison. And if you look up this documentation link, it will give you hints on how to improve that situation. Another cool thing that I can show off in uh, writing code is uh, then the Rust analyzer with um, a, a silly thing combined with the formatter. So if I were now to have an editor that doesn't do the indenting for me, like Wim uh, Ed uh, said, because I was thinking, oh, this is a 3D library with a very pointer, and I save it, then cargo format will auto format the code and it will jump to the correct indent. And uh, going to the rest analyzer information, we can see that it tells us that uh, the set field does not exist in circle. And we can remove it or implement circle in 3D, whatever that means. We remove the line because it doesn't make sense. We save again and uh, our information is gone. So the rest analyzer will help you quickly finding out errors before having to run the compiler even. Okay, let's jump back into the shell and uh, check out the features that um, this provides. We can run now cargo test on this uh, tool and we will see that it will compile the examples and the code. And it tells us right off the bat that uh, we have the one normal running test called it works and it passed, it was okay. And we also have another test that is written for the square area implementation. It's in the doc tests of Geo, and this one passed as well. Therefore, it's very easy to integrate the whole uh, testing and documentation into each other, and that's very, very useful. The next thing that we can do, of course, is use uh, cargo build and uh, build a release, for example. Then this will be the optimized build that has no longer the debug information and uh, the debug checkers inside and you can use that to deploy it for your customers, for example. Another cool tool would be then Cargo Update will update your dependency of your crate. I have no dependencies with this one, but this is a very useful thing as well. Another cool feature, if you have written a library, often you want to demonstrate how to use it and often this will end up in a binary. So what you can do is write an example. So I've written an example in the examples directory. This automatically becomes recognized as, oh, this must be an example. I've written the demo example. So let's look inside. It's very simple. It uses uh, the definitions of the traits and uh, the geometric objects. I instantiate them and I have some print line code that does stuff for me. So if I want to now uh, run this example, I don't have to build it and look up where the binary is and do some other magic. I can just use cargo run examples. And then I use the name of the example, so demo. And uh, it runs the example for me, showing the output that I programmed inside there. And that's another very useful feature. 
now we can go and check out how this whole documentation thing works. So cargo doc will run the documentation build for us. So if I just run cargo doc, it builds a documentation and it is in some uh, fancy directory. But I can, however, also run cargo doc open and then it will open the browser for me, which I will show you here. I will have to switch over to my normal screen, drag in the browser, and here you can see that they have built the documentation, and here we have our headline that we have defined in our code, then the description, bullet points, and then here we have the documentation of our structs, so the circle struct, the square. In the square, we have the implementation for area of the square, and down here, you see the example code of how to use the area for the square implementation, uh, as you can see here, which makes writing documentation a breeze and very easy, helping a lot with people's code and integration into your projects. I hope this introduction into the ecosystem and tooling was uh, helpful and uh, Thanks for watching. Coming up in the next episode will be tuples, arrays, and slices.